Sirius XM, ladies and gentlemen. Worldwide Wednesday yeah. is in full effect now. You know, we said, Shells, that, in, uh, oh, that on yep. Worldwide Wednesdays, we're going to do things that have uh, nothing to do with classic hip-hop. Right. This is not one of those things. <laughs> okay. You know how um, you be in the business for so long that, you know, we do the back in the days to the, today, Shells? Yes. Oh, and then you see something that came out 24, 25 years ago. Right. And then, for me, it makes me start thinking about the people that were around these projects that I've known, not just the artists, but the other people around it that I've known for that many years. Yes. And this young lady joining us in the studio is one of those people from Tommy Boy Records. I mean, spearheaded some of the most incredible hip hop that would ever landed in our laps. And we're very grateful that she was involved in that because that music wouldn't have been what it was during the golden era of hip hop. Miss Monica Lynch is here. Yeah. Yeah. Monica. All right, Ed Lover. <laughs> I've known her for like 30 years, yo. Damn. I know, we go back like taxes. Yes, we, <laughs> we do, we do, for a long, long time. You know, it was funny, Ed, coming up here to Sirius today because down in the lobby you have to do the sign-in and everything, yeah. uh -huh. and the, the guy, the security guy says, oh, you're here for Busted Halo, right? I said, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to tell you I got racially profiled <laughs> down in the lobby. I said, what is Busted Halo? Oh, you know, it's for Catholics. And like, like he must have thought I was an ex-nun or something. <laughs> oh, I'm man. here for Ed Lover. Thanks, thank you. <laughs> She's here. Just like, okay. Then obviously, dude, you don't know your history. When did, when did you start at Tommy Boy? At the beginning, the very beginning? Uh, yeah, just, uh, just about uh, December of 1981. Wow! Yeah, it's getting in the Wayback Machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I found an and the Village Voice for a Guy Gal Friday, and uh, uh, I followed it up, and it was a, a, a young man named Tom Silverman who had right. just started Tommy Boy Records, and I was the first employee. And it was a fantastic opportunity because wow. back then, wow. back then, you know, you had to do everything. You know, it was a, a, like a two-person operation. We were working out of his apartment. And he also had this disco tip sheet called Dance Music Report. Uh -huh. And uh, so, yeah, you know, getting the records made, getting them distributed, calling up the radio stations. I mean, this is all so long ago. Wow. People don't even remember that back in those days, there, were, there weren't even rap albums. Right. Very rare. Right. There had only been a handful, let alone videos or something like The Source magazine. This is before Word Up and Rap Masters. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, the Plasticine era. Wow. <laughs> Dinosaurs ruled the earth. <laughs> 1981. Just you and Tom, huh? Yeah. 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 What was the first artist that was signed to Tommy Boy? Oh, Did he gosh. have anybody before you got there? there? Yeah, there was um, Bon Rock and Cotton Candy. Had, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can't even remember the name of the record. That was the first one that came out. Then there was, uh, uh, we had our first quasi-hit, or uh, hit locally, was uh, Jazzy Sensation. Okay, yeah, can you feel it? Yeah. Can you feel it? My Jazzy Sensation. Africa mm -hmm. Bambada. Right, right. Jazzy and the Jazzy J. Five. Yeah, yeah, and the Jazzy Five. Right, so that was your first, like, was that regional? Yeah, that was regional, mid-Atlantic. Okay, know. <laughs> okay. But we did, you know, there was enough to make some noise. And uh, again, back then, you know, there were hardly any radio shows that even played this stuff. We would go up to uh, Mr. Magic uh, when he was up on Riverside Drive. HBI was on Riverside Drive. Right. And uh, him and Marley were there. And I remember when we dropped off the uh, test pressing for Planet Rock, mm -hmm. which must have been in March of 1982, I think. Wow. Yeah. Did you keep any of this stuff? I have a storage locker that I pay a lot of money for. I bet you do. <laughs> That's oh, just full of archives and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. A test pressing of Planet Rock. Now, it, it wasn't even a test pressing. It was a plate. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, like from Frankfurt Way. And I yeah. That's probably where we mastered it. But, um, but yeah, it was... Uh, I, I say this because, you know, I see people, kids today, posting about, oh, the warm and fuzzy feelings they get about the 90s. I'm like, the 90s? Right, right. <laughs> the 90s, let's talk 80s. Exactly. Wow, Monica, yeah, yeah. that's, that's, cr how old were you when you, when, when you first got with Tom? Let's see, let's do the math. Um, I'm 58 now. Okay. And so I think I was like, I just turned 25. Wow. Yeah. Well, wow. and the first employee, the Tommy Boy, right, and then you... Yeah. Wrote it out. 
wrote it out. We had some. We had a, a really, really great uh, first few years. We had, of course, Planet Rock was just a barnstorming record. Even today, I just heard some kid, you know, uh, blasting it out of his car mm -hmm. when he was driving by my apartment. It's like, oh my God, it always sounds so great coming out of a car. <laughs> so, but we had all these great electro records, you know, Planet Rock and um, uh, Soul Sonic Force had a few hits. Play at your own risk. Uh, Planet Patrol. Yeah, right, Planet, Planet Patrol. Patrol. Um, and then we also had the Johnson crew. Right. Lest we forget the Johnson wow. crew and their wacky wigs. Yeah. And, of course, the Force MDs. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. How did y'all get the Force MDs? Again, it was Mr. Magic. It was a talent contest. And uh, I've, I've heard that his daughter saw them on the uh, Staten, Staten Island, Island Ferry. Ferry. Right. Yeah, but they also were doing local talent contests. Yeah, they were, the four, they were Dr. Rock in the Force MCs. That's exactly right. You have a good memory there. Yeah, because I used to see them perform all, all locally all around the place. Yeah, you Dr. saw Dr. Rock was a DJ, and then the, all of them were, they, they were uh, MCs, but they sang also. Exactly. And right. uh, Jesse did the great Michael Jackson impressions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, there. absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so that was sort of the first wave of Tommy Boy's uh, success. And then sort of in the mid-'80s, um, we had a little bit of a dry period. Those those, those folks from Hollis <laughs> 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 start coming in and making a lot of noise. Right. And uh, so we sort of calmed down a little bit, and then... We also have uh, had a great group from also from Mr. Magic Stetsasonic. Wow. wow! Yeah, that they came th uh, through in the mid '80s, and then you know uh, Chuck D told me that there was three great albums that it came off of a tour that he did with running them, and one of those two of those albums were the Stetsasonic album and uh, Take a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. Wow! And the De and De La Souls album. Wow. Because, yeah, because the first day I sold on because, you know, Prince Paul was part of Stessa Simon. That's absolutely so, right. So that made, you know, that he was already cooking up stuff while he was doing his thing. And mm -hmm. then the Stessa Sonic album came out and then Fear of a Black Planet came out. And that Stessa Sonic album is really, really underrated album. And Agreed. people need to go back and get that Stessa Sonic album. That's an incredible body of work. You know, I think Stetsa Sonic is, as a band has uh, been very underrated. And I, some of that is... That was uh, another Mr. Magic thing? Yes, it was. Damn. Wow. Yeah. From a, from a contest of some sort? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Wow. I Mr. Mean, Mr. Magic was... Responsible for a lot. Yeah. Huh? Yes, absolutely. Mr. Magic was doing it. When did the Warner stuff come, come along? Oh, gosh. Now, that's an interesting... Because uh, uh, it was Tommy Boy up. Warner Brothers, right? It was. It was an... Uh, well, I'll tell you how it happened. We were, um, we had a track that appeared in the 11th hour, 59th minute. We got a chance to put, get the Force MDs on the soundtrack for Crush Groove. Okay. Uh. Because it was supposed to be New Edition. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was supposed to be New Edition, and Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis were going to produce this big ballad. And um, I kept hounding uh, Doug McHenry and George Jackson, the yes. producers. Yeah, rest in peace to, to, to George Jackson. Yes. So great. Great yes. guy. And uh, I said, well, yeah, come on, for some days. No, no, we got new edition, you know. Right, because they were in the movie. Yeah, right. but something fell apart with the deal. And they and uh, Doug McHenry called me and said, "Can you get the four MDs up to Minnesota within the next 24 hours? We're going to record this song with Jimmy and Terry and da 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 da." So we dropped everything, made it happen, sent the group up there, and it became the first uh, top 10 pop record, not only for Tommy Boy but for Jimmy and Terry as well. Is and, that uh, Tears? Uh, that's a. Uh, Yes, it's tears. Oh wow! No, no, no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tender love. Tender, tender love. love. Tender tears love. Tears came before. Yes. Right. 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 I've been thinking about tears lately as well because we were just talking about they're gonna do a big uh, unsung episode about the Force MDs. Oh uh, great, wow. great, great. Yeah. Tender love. Tender love. That was Tim, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis's first major crossover hit. Yes, and it was as producers. Exactly. Now you see, you know what? This is why when I argue with people. When we go and we have these Michael Jackson and Prince arguments, yeah. this is why I always pick Prince. Okay? <laughs> Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis came from the time. Yeah. That was Prince's group. All right? Written and produced by Prince. Okay? So if they didn't break out on their own, 
and then they did the force and deeds. Yep. You see, all that comes back to Prince one way or another, son. Yeah. Because he gave them boys life. Yep. As great producers. So that was your first really big hit. Yeah. And then Warner Brothers picked up the phone to start calling, huh? Uh, yeah. It was a little. Crush Groove was on the Warner labels, a sound. That record was huge. Huge. And it couldn't be more different than the hip hop stuff that yes. we were putting out, which was great. You know, right. it's nice to have that diversity. Yeah. You know, towards uh, a little later on in the 80s, we sort of started this whole other era in the uh -huh. label history um, with. De La Soul, mm. uh, Queen Latifah. Who bought you De La Soul? That's a great question because um, actually the first person who told me about De La Soul was Daddy O from Daddy -O. Stetsasonic. Wow. Daddy O called me it's up. All LinkedIn, huh? and yeah. All this stuff gets linked in. He said, <laughs> wow. "Oh, you know, Paul's got this group that he's been working with." He goes, "They're either gonna be, you know." Uh, it's either really great or it's really nothing. <laughs> 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 but they're called De La Soul, and I thought, wow, that's a great name. Right. It's a very musical name. And he came, uh, Daddy O came to the office with a, a, a demo cassette with three different acts on it, two other acts that he was shopping around, and then De La Soul was the last act on the cassette. And it was as raw as you can imagine, his plug tuning demo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard that, and I was like, Wow, this is, it, 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 you know the old term, dusted? Yeah. It had that dusted sound to it. Right. Mm. And um, we jumped on that right away because, not, again, it was like one of those things where you say, nothing sounds like this. Yeah, nothing, nothing was like De La Soul. Nothing, and they sort of really created um, a different aesthetic, a different vibe about hip-hop that was, you know, well, just in me, myself, and I, even in the video, you saw that right. they were like the anti gold chain wear. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Pushing everybody out there. You know, the everybody that was wearing what they perceived to be the hip hop uniform at that time, that's what De La Soul was pushing them out of the way. That's what they were saying that we could be who we are from Long Island, from the suburbs. We don't have to talk gangster. We don't have to try to be hard. We got skills. Yep. And we can do exactly what we wanted to do. And it's about the inner sound, y'all. That's what it's about. Exactly. It I love them. Very introspective. I love De La Soul. Let's play Me, Myself, and I. I love De La Soul. I'll tell you a funny De La Soul story when we come back. More Monica Lynch. It's the Ed Lover Show, Backspin, Sirius XM. <laughs> what you, Queen Latifah? Mark the 45 King? Uh, Queen Latifah, I would actually credit three people with that. Uh, yes, Mark the 45 King, a young A&R guy named Dante Ross. <laughs> Dante, hey, stop dissing Dante on record. Dante gets the gas face. <laughs> Love Dante. Love Dante and, uh, and Fat Five Freddy. So it was like three people were sort of, you know, all sort of saying, oh, Queen Latifah, Queen Latifah, Queen Latifah. You know, but uh, absolutely, you know, um, Dante had given him his first day in our job. Right. And uh, that was the first signing for him. So wow. it was a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's Princess crazy. of the Posse. Princess of the Posse, Wrath of My Madness. Wrath of My Madness. Yeah. Yeah. So Where'd you get Coolio? digital from? Yeah, Coolio was huge. Coolio Where'd you get huge? digital from? A guy that was doing a. a promotion for us, Ed Strickland brought them to us uh, via the manager, management, Atron Gregory. Yes. Yeah. And Atron used to manage Tupac, too. Why y'all ain't signed Tupac? That's exactly right. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I got Tupac's demo, heard it, other people heard it, and his first demo wasn't as extraordinary as <laughs> his career led, uh, led to be. You know, it's interesting because Tupac started, of course, as a dancer for Digital Underground, and um, he would come by the office, and he was the biggest flirt. He was always flirting with the receptionist, <laughs> the clowning around. Right. And, you know, um, and it wasn't until he did Juice with Tretch. Right. And I think that when he did that role... Shells, how many times did I have I told people that? You have said this many times. Oh, really? Yes. yes. A million times. I was on the set. That's when, okay. that's when Tupac and Stretch started hanging out together. Yeah, okay, there you go. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when that happened. And it was kind of like after Juice, and it was like, pew! Yeah, it, there was a whole other side to Tupac that um, emerged. Yeah. I mean, it, so, in any case, you know, it, every label has had artists where they say, well, that one got away, or why didn't you sign so-and-so? Right. I've always had the opinion that things happen the way they're supposed to happen, and 
Um, you know, Tupac had a great uh, label with Steve Berman over at Interscope really yeah. worked Tupac for a long time before and, Tupac and broke. Ma that's right. Monica knows that first Tupac album, nobody was checking for Tupac like that. Right. I'm telling you, yo, oh, I was there. Right. Nobody was checking. We used to get on the road for, with Tupac and go do the show here, do the show there. And people just they didn't come out. Right. They didn't come out like that. At that time, believe it or not, it was mm -hmm. not until really after Juice came out, but before that, when Juice really first came out, Omar Epps was a bigger star than That's Tupac true. was. Yeah. And then it just started rolling, and then all of a sudden it just started rolling, and it started rolling, and Indescope really stood behind them, and they really worked it, and worked it, and worked it, and worked it. And they didn't have another act to really work. This That's was right. their first big uh, step into a, a rap game, mm -hmm. and so... You know, I give Steve Berman specifically a lot of credit for yeah. sticking with They have him. Death Row then. Death Row wasn't no, even that's, nowhere. That's right. Yeah, near that. Near. Who is the biggest artist you think came through your door, beside Tupac, that y'all did not sign? Oh, gosh. Well, you could say... Um, well, it's a convoluted tale um, about Wu-Tang. Okay, you tell know. me how to We want to hear it? We have time. We got time. Well, I, wouldn't well, right even, I don't know that it ever would have come to pass. Well, did y'all have one of the Wu-Tang members? Well, we did. because Y'all had the RZA, right? The RZA, but the RZA at that time was not the RZA. Right. He was Prince Rakim. Yes. yes, and he was on Tommy Boy. Yes. We love you, Rakim. Yes, exactly. We used to play the video on your own TV raps. I remember that. Yeah, and he was uh, managed by Funky Mel Kwan. Yes. Do you remember Mel, Mel Kwan? Mel Kwan and Shabazz. Yes. yes. Of course. Mel Kwan was working uh, at this... Um, one of those fur wholesalers in the West. <laughs> and, yeah. he was, and he was managing Rakim uh, as well. And then, uh, you know, I actually have like the early uh, Wu demos. And I, to be honest with you, <laughs> I thought that they were incredible. But I think it, it, it was R Rakim was um he said he we put out that record and it was kind of a light silly record you mm. know he wasn't going to get any street cred from that but right. and then he sort of really went underground and sort of disappeared for a while and I, and I think that the uh genesis of Wu-Tang was starting to bubble up and again you know I think that uh Wu-Tang uh being with uh, Steve Ripken worked out fantastic yeah you know and they spawned many many Artists, uh, Wait a minute, can, can, we, can we backtrack well. a minute? You said you have early Wu Tang demos on cassette, yeah. Wow, Woo! all right, oh, I, gotta hear so that. No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hear nothing else. Let's,